Hi, it's Alice and Greg, and Alice is behind the camera today, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my process for applying for temporary residency by reason of family unity. In most cases, the Mexican government requires that you return to your home country and visit the Mexican consulate in your home country to apply for a change in your residency status. They do allow for certain exceptions, and one of those exceptions is for reason of family unity, in which case you can apply for a change in your status in Mexico. In order to apply for temporary residence by family unity, you need to show that you are immediate family of a Mexican citizen. And by immediate family, that means either the father, mother, daughter, son, or spouse of a Mexican citizen. The paperwork you will need to apply for this is your proof of identity, which is usually your passport. You will need certified copies of the documents that establish your relationship. So that could be your birth certificate, that could be your marriage certificate. If your paperwork is issued in another country, for example, your birth certificate or your marriage certificate, then it will need to be apostilled in the state of issue. Additionally, there's another step. It will need to be translated by an official Mexican translator called a perito traductor. Here in Mexico City, all of these applications are processed by the INM. It is located in Polanco. Appointments can be made online at the official website and we'll put that link down below. If you don't see an appointment come up right away, keep checking back. They do release new appointments weekly. Be persistent. In my case, in Mexico City, I had to pay two fees. The first fee is to change my status as a visitor. And the second fee is the application fee to be a temporary resident. The two fees that I've just mentioned need to be paid in advance of your appointment, and they can be paid at a bank, any bank in Mexico. When you go to pay your fees at the bank, it's important that you bring cash. You will have to withdraw cash from wherever you can get it because they will not accept the credit card and they will not accept the check. I feel pretty prepared. I've done a lot of research on this. I've read a lot of blogs and watched a lot of videos on this topic. So I'm confident, I'm confident that I have all the paperwork I need, uh, but <laughs> but as with most things, there's always a chance that something could go wrong. As changuitos. <laughs> well, after much waiting... <laughs> okay, so in Mexico City, the immigration office is located in Polanco, which is on the opposite end of the city from Coyoacán. I took two buses to get there. Um, and even though on Google Maps it said that the second bus dropped me off right next to the immigration office, it was a lie and I had to walk. No, I actually ended up having to get off early and taking an Uber there. Um, I got there about 15, 20 minutes early. They recommend that you get there 10 minutes before your appointment. Um, but I was ushered right in. I showed my QR code, which is you know, they, that's printed out ahead of time. The security guard checked the list, saw my name was on the list, and let me in. Mm -hmm. 
I was directed to a waiting area at the far end of the building. It was on the first floor and um, security guard checked my paperwork again and said, take a seat, we'll call your name. Within five minutes, they called my name and the process is a lot like going to the DMV in the United States with a lot less pissed off people. There's a long line of windows and they're all numbered and they tell you which numbered window to go to. Once you approach the window, you're greeted. They ask you for your, your uh, appointment paperwork. They take everything and they look through it. Um, and she looked through it very carefully. And at one point she indicated that I didn't have certain documents that I was supposed to have. I was missing a particular certification on our marriage certificate that could only be issued by an office that was located about two blocks away after paying a fee. Most difficult for me was the ENIC card. Now the ENIC card here in Mexico City is your voter identification card, but it is for all intents and purposes your official identification and you are never parted from it. So it would be an unusual request for a husband to carry his wife's ENA card. That was a big monkey wrench for me. So the only solution was to text Alice and have her get in a, an Uber and come from Coyoacan de Polanco. So I also needed to have photocopies of my receipts of payment for my applications. I had two payments. One is to apply for change of status and the other one is to apply for my temporary residency card. So I had those receipts that were issued by the bank, but I needed photocopies of those receipts. So everything got back right around the same time. Alice showed up, I walked back in. They didn't want to give me an appointment again because they said, we told you to come back and make another appointment to which I adamantly refused. And then Alice did a little begging in Spanish, uh, which went a lot further than my indignant cries and um, they ended up helping me out. So I went back and the whole process from start to finish took about three and a half hours. My advice for anyone going through this process is to bring the original and photocopies of any piece of documentation you think they will need. Okay, so if you're patient and you're lucky and you persevere and you don't throw a fit in the office, you will be rewarded with one of these beautiful green temporary residency cards, which now means I don't have to worry about whether or not the immigration officer is going to give me 30 days, seven days, 90 days, 180 days. I can just come in as a temporary resident. If you manage to go through this process, congratulations. I'm gonna to toast myself here because that's how I roll. Cheers to me. If you've enjoyed the content of this video and you found it helpful, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when we upload new videos, which is typically every Friday. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you again soon.